What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and this is Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting, techniques, gear, photography in general. Anything that you want to discuss, we can discuss that here, but mostly with an emphasis on lighting and definitely with an emphasis on Profoto. If you're watching this on Profoto.com, you're going to see some stuff pop up around the screen. That is going to be something like whenever I say uh, Profoto A2 and A2 will click up. If you want some more info on what it is we're talking about, you can click that and keep watching us. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, you're not going to see that. If you don't really care, cool, just keep hanging with us. If you want to see it, check us out on Profoto.com. So let's jump into our topic for today. Today we're talking about gobos. Gobos are short for go between. So it's something that is put between your light and your subject or your light and your background is just something in between that you use to cut light, shape light, cast patterns, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you're just using something in between your light and uh, again, your background or your subject to add some sort of visual interest, whether you're using like a flag to try to like maybe split light somebody and keep you know this side shadow and this side in the light, or whether you're doing what we're doing today, we're using a house plant to broadcast, um, as you can see the, the house plant in the corner of the screen, uh, to broadcast uh, certain shapes onto either your subject or your background. So that's what a go between is. It's, it, it's a very, very simple term. It's a very, very simple idea, but we're gonna talk through why we do certain light placements and why we're choosing certain lights for what we're shooting and that way you also kind of understand uh, whenever you start to use some gobos, why you might want to uh, make the correct light selection, make the correct light placement to achieve the look that you're going for. So let's talk about what we're doing today. So first and foremost, the vibe that I, I was going for with this shot is something kind of like, kind of like a moonlit vibe, something a little more tropical feeling. That's why you see more of a, a tropical plant here. We have a Mansoor plant. Uh, it's my wife's Mansoor plant. She named his it, name is Monty. his name is Monty. She's very, very happy with him. Uh, so I have to, uh, I have to be delicate. I was like, you be careful with my I have to be delicate. So, but the idea is to shoot something that feels a little more tropical, which is kind of why we're going to uh, be using this plant with these shapes, but I want it to kind of have this night feel to it. Like maybe you're going for like a little bit of a stroll uh, and like the moonlight is low and it's coming in direct right through the plants and it's casting this beautiful shadow, but you're getting the nice, um, the nice light from, you know, that moon look. So that's kind of my idea behind it. Like an evening stroll through maybe some tropics with some cool plants and the moon's low in the sky and it's full and it's bright and it's broadcasting. So let's talk about how we set up for that. So first and foremost, I have a um, translucent uh, shoot through umbrella above here with a B10X plus. Um, and inside of this umbrella, uh, let me grab my Connect Pro. Cool. So inside this umbrella, you'll see that there is a Blue gel. Can they see that it turned blue? A little Not bit? A little bit. Okay, well. Blue-ish. It turned blue. It's blue. There's blue light in there. So there's a, there's a blue gel in there. So it's got the, um, I just put the, uh, the OCF2, the, uh, the OCF2 uh, grid filter holder in there and then just clicked in a blue gel. Just one single blue gel, uh, not peacock blue, just straight blue. Um, and that is to, this is kind of like a big room fill. So the, um, Umbrella's acting like a lantern, like uh, like that you would see any, any other type of lantern on like a film set or something like that. And what its job is to do is to throw light everywhere, broadcast it all around. The light is gonna hit the inside of the umbrella. It's also gonna bounce back up and hit the ceiling, which is gonna start to throw some more diffused light everywhere. So it should give us a nice room, uh, a room fill. Uh, and we will take that shot so you can kind of see what that looks like uh, with just the lantern. Then we have a three foot octa. I don't know if they can actually see this. Gotcha. I actually need to start, I'm gonna start bringing it back into place. So there's a three foot octa right here. Also, if you look here. Everyone confused by doing a super source. Gel blue. Yeah, so gel blue. So you can see the blue light is in there as well. 
The reason that we are gelled blue is because the light from the evening is generally has a very cool blue tone to it. So we want to kind of make that uh, that look and feel. So we've gelled the fill light blue. We've gelled the overhead fill blue. So it should give us a nice, cool, like twilighty feel to it. We're also going to keep the power of them relatively low so that we can um, so it's not introducing too much blue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take an A2 and we're going to blast it through this Monsora plant, Monty, if you will. Yes. We're going to blast it through the plant, but all it has on it is a uh, 20 degree gel or I'm sorry, gel. 20 degree gel, a 20 degree grid. So, and the reason we have the 20 degree grid is I don't want the light being thrown too wide. I don't want it to knock out a lot of the blue tone that's in the, uh, with the gels. The uh, tough thing about using white light and gels is if the white light starts to creep into it, it will overpower the color. It get, it'll get rid of it completely. So the 20 degree grid is to take that light, tighten it down, and kind of keep that light right where we want it again to kind of have that feel of the moonlight being a little bit low and just super direct so really really cool stuff we chose a2 because the head size is smaller so uh as opposed to a traditional pro photo uh like the b10 uh the b10x pluses which we're using for the softbox uh and the overhead we're using the a2 because it's not 100 millimeters it's 70 millimeters so we already have a smaller uh a smaller flash area, which is going to make the light a little bit harder. It's going to make the shadows a little more pronounced, which is kind of cool. So very, very fun stuff. Um, also, I used a B10X Plus here on the uh, the fill light. You don't have to use a B10X Plus. I did it because it gives you room to, uh, I'll take it down in a minute and show it to you because I just don't want to um, mess with it right now before we take the photos. But what it gives you the ability to do is take the three foot octa. So I have an OCF three foot octa on there. Uh, it gives you the ability to push the octa back a little bit and then reach in and pop the OCF two uh, gel holder on there with a blue gel. So the, it's gelled with an OCF uh, two blue gel inside of the three foot octa. Pretty awesome stuff. The one thing I didn't do earlier and I wanna do this really quick before, while I'm thinking about it is I didn't push it back a little bit, so. Yeah, I've got a little room, so there we go. So that way it's uh, not cutting off too much of the light on the inside. Very cool. So this is what I want to do now. So let's take the, um, let's get Kate in here. We're going to bring the camera in and I'm going to show you how I built the uh, setup. So that way you can kind of see, you know, how I chose the look for the overhead, how I chose the look for the fill light and then you can see what happens when we bring in the A2. So, so this yeah, that's perfect. Cause all the stuff's relatively, relatively close. So, um, I have Kate, uh, positioned probably, um, and one of the things I like to do, I'm going to, I'm going to kick some of this light down a little bit, like maybe this light right here. Yeah, I, I pulled it a little bit further forward because I wanted to try to get some of it off the um, off the background. Uh, cool. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. So let's go and kick on these lights one at a time. So let's kill the main and the fill light. Perfect. So now we just have overhead. So cool. So slide over just a touch, Kate. Uh, this way, sorry, to your left. Perfect, right there. So here's what it looks like, just the overhead fill light. Here we go, three, two, one. So again, it's just supposed to kind of give like this cool glow to it. Uh, honestly, it might be a touch overpowered for what I want. I might need to pull it back. I oh, know it looks kind of nice. I'll bring it back a little bit. It's a, it's a tiny bit overpowered for what I want. Um, but it looks pretty good. You can see that the uh, it does a nice job kind of filling the whole area. So let's, oh yeah, thank you. You rock. We usually have it face the other way whenever we're doing all of our shooting stuff. So let's go here. Let's pull the power back to seven and a half. Let's take another, sh oh, let's go to seven and see what happens. Here we go. Take a tiny step back. Uh, sorry. The, the, yeah. yeah, you're back. Three, 
two, one. That's pretty good, actually. Actually, really like that. So we pulled that power back to seven. So it's a nice, subtle uh, blue. It's not it's not too heavy on the highlight, so it doesn't feel too much like another light source. So now let's bring in the three foot octa to give us some fill light coming forward. So we'll go here to group B, turn that bad boy on, and let's let's start at power level of seven just to kind of match. It's probably gonna be a little too underpowered, but we can kind of play with it just to see where we are. So let's get this three foot octa kind of into place. Perfect. So here we go. A little step uh, to your, there we go. Three, two, one. I think that actually looks pretty good. So what it's done is it's brought a little bit more fill light into the shot. I'm gonna see what happens if I pull back by half a stop just for funsies, ready Kate? Three, two, one. Actually, I actually think I like that better. The half stop, I think that half stop makes a big difference. And so the other thing to know about using gels is that when you're using gels, if you bring the power down, so if you're not jamming a whole lot of power through the actual gel itself, it's gonna start saturating a whole lot more. And so that's why the blue's kind of really rich is because we're not, we're, we're honestly a little underexposed for what we're doing. Uh, let me, I'm gonna try one more shot, okay. half a stop down a little bit lower. I just wanna see kind of how that's broadcast on you. Three, two, one. Let's see if I like that better. You know what, I actually think I like that better. Yeah, it's pretty. I think I like that way better. So um, so now we have this nice kind of room fill from the uh, overhead, like the lanterns, the umbrella kind of set up like a lantern. And then we have this really nice forward fill from the three foot octa. So now it's starting to fill like a really big light source kind of just everywhere. We're lighting everything. So this doesn't feel directional, which is nice. It just feels like the evening. So now we get to do the fun part. We get to add in the uh, the gobo, the actual, the, the Monty. Monty and the hard light. <laughs> so some things to know about, uh, you just you hang right there, Kate, you're good. So some things to know about um, using some gobos. So you want to, oh, we're here, we're there. So some things you might wanna know about using gobos. So one, the further back that you can get the light from the thing that you're using to broadcast the pattern, the more defined the, the thing that you're broadcasting the pattern is gonna be. So right now, this A2 is relatively close to the Mansoor plan itself. So it's going to kind of fall off towards the edges a little bit. Um, so that's just something to know. And then, depending on the size of the shadow that you want uh, from the thing that you're broadcasting, you're gonna also play with the placement of the the thing creating the pattern in relationship to your subject. So if I were to start backing, uh, backing it up a little bit more, I could get a little bit bigger pattern, a little bit closer, the pattern's gonna be a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. And then also that's gonna be uh, predicated to on the distance of the light from the, uh, from the thing broadcasting the pattern, so cool. How do you white balance a, a shot like this, does it matter? Uh, well, I mean, I'm using gel, so it doesn't really matter to white balance. So someone was asking, how do you white balance a shot like this? Generally, I have my camera set to flash um, when, I'm, when I'm in the studio, oh, or I have it set to, I take it back, I have mine set to a custom uh, white balance of 5,900, just where I like to be. So you can auto white balance if you, if you want to, but your camera's gonna try to fix it. I would just set it to flash and let the gels do what they do. So, uh, can I give you one more? Yeah, you can give me another okay, question. So, uh, when you stack grids and gels, is there an order of operation to the way you recommend stacking these things? So gels and grids, there's not an order to operation when you're stacking them. So I don't have, I don't have a gel on the gridded A2. It is just the, the grid against the white light flash. Um, but if you're using diffusion and grids, there is an order that you want to stack them. So like, if you were using like, so here, let me just show you this thing really fast. So we have this uh, grid filter holder thing. Oh uh, yeah. So we have this, I know it's kind of hard to see, but we have this grid filter holder thing, right? And you, it has this little little card that comes with some diffusion. Oh yeah, thanks, Kate. So it has this little card that comes with some diffusion. If you'll notice, when you pop this into the uh, unit itself, let me make sure I have it in the right way. I'm fighting with it. Oh, that's because I need to do it this way. There we go. Perfect. 
Wow, now I'm struggling with it. <laughs> I was trying to show you guys something cool and now I'm struggling with it, it's cool. So if you look, there's still a space right here for you to put the grid inside of it. So when you're messing with diffusion, the diffusion is the thing that becomes the light source because it's kind of opaque, it's not see-through. Um, if it was clear, it wouldn't matter, but because it's opaque, this becomes the light source. So if you want to control that light, you want the grid on the opposite side of that diffusion. diffusion. So gels, not a big deal because they're see-through. Diffusion, you wanna make sure that the grid is the last thing in the chain of light. So, cool. Sweet, so now you understand why we have blue gels on the overhead, why we have blue gels in the front and placement of the light for your gobos. Now let's take some photos. So use your, um, use your continuous light on your, uh, on your flashes to place the shadows right where you want it. It's very, very, it's not very, very important, but it just makes life easier when you're trying to figure out where, um, where you have your light falling. So like for me, my goal is to try to keep at least a sliver of light on Kate's at least one eye and two her lips. So we're gonna use the continuous light of the A2 to, to achieve that. Um, I was running the continuous light pretty hard earlier. I'm gonna change out my battery just, just for the good measure. Yes. Good measure. So, and just, yeah. just, remember, just remember that your battery power uh, is consumed by the continuous light. So that's why I changed it out. I've been using my continuous light. What's up, Kate? Oh, someone was asking if there's a difference between a gobo and a cookie. And I feel like Gobos and cookies. No, I don't know. No, no, no. It's something I don't know. No, so, so a cookie, a cookie and a gobo are the same thing if you're talking about a stage light. Uh, so if you're talking about like some sort of a projector that's projecting the light and the shape, a gobo and a cookie are the same thing. But in the world of just something being, I'm very, very dark. There we go. It's in the shadow of the thing. So in the world of just something being between the light and the subject, that's also called a gobo. So a gobo and a cookie, yes, are the same thing used in like theatrical projection spotlights or things like that too. It's how like they broadcast shapes on like, she was an opera, uh, she's an opera singer. She's an opera singer, but she didn't know, she doesn't know much about lighting. She, she sang. So, uh, so yes, cookie. Gobo, the same thing in a projection light. A gobo is just something that goes in between your light and your subject or, yeah. So, and that's what the cookie was doing. So yes, it is. And yes, they are called cookies. Okay. Which also coincidentally enough. I kind of like cookie. I like cookies. Well, this isn't a cookie because uh, the cookie is actually circular. It's like a little disc oh. that you drop in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. You know, semantics. Details. So I'm gonna use, again, the continuous light. I, you probably aren't gonna be able to see it as well. Uh, you can kind of see me kicking it on. But I'm gonna be using the continuous light of the A2 just to kind of get the, um, the shadows roughly where I want them. Uh, Kate will also kind of position herself so she can see, see them. I can see the light with my eye. So something like right there maybe? Right here works. All right. For, for you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So let's get set up right here. So three, oh, hold on, let me reposition my camera. Here we go. So three, two, one. So now the white light is gonna flood in and start covering the, um, start over, kind of overpowering the, the blue light. And so again, it's gonna start feeling like that, um, that moonlight that I'm going for. So if I wanted to tighten those shadows up some, here, let me, I'm gonna just kind of play around with some of this stuff a little bit too. Just kind of a lot of playing with placement. Could you look back over your shoulder and just kind of tell me what you see? I, I see it now, I got it. Right there? Or at least I see the, the light. Okay, cool. So here we go, three, two, one. Okay, so, and, and again, this is where you wanna play with a continuous light. So right now, the bottom of her face is lit. It's a little bit tougher in here just because we have a lot of overhead lights. Uh, so it's a little harder to see it. So let's see if I can bring this down just to see a little bit more. I'm gonna kill that overhead, kill this overhead. Cool. I can see it a little bit better now. So look back over that shoulder. There we go. Stay right there. Three, two, one. So cool, so now we're starting to get some more light onto the face, but we still have some kind of cool shapes. 
because the light is so close to the mod uh, to the actual thing that we're broadcasting through the light isn't the shapes aren't as defined so if we want those shapes to look a little more pronounced back the light up so that's what we're going to do so let's back the light up some cool do you want me to look at a camera or at the light uh, you can look towards we'll, we'll play around with it so i'm going to back this up as much as i can and then also what i'm going to do is i'm going to so i'm going to show you how can you take a tiny step this way i think i can see the shadows in the background i'm trying to make sure that like there's something there can you is this look over I can't see it at all. look over your shoulder yeah I, I see a little bit right there yeah perfect so here we go <laughs> here we go three two one so there, so because we backed the light up some more, we're getting some more definition into the actual plant itself. Uh, it's a little bit harder to, to get the, the angle of the plant the right way that I want, but it's, just, it's kind of just walking around uh, and playing with it. I also have this extra leaf. So what we could do, can I get you back in there, Kate? Yes. Does somebody have a question? Um, yeah, so back, back it up, back, back it up. Yep. But um, let's see, wow, impressive. Okay, let's see, oh, 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 uh, the belted out to Someone's asking me to belt out some opera. Oh, she's not warmed up. She would. Not warmed up. One day. Let's see. With which gels, orange, blue, green, yellow, red, should you start? Is there a most important color? So it depends on what you do. So if, if you're like an event photographer, uh, so someone was asking, what is the most important gels to start with? So if you're an event photographer, I would say the most important gels that you could start with are going to be your color corrective gel. So like a, a CTO gel or a CTB. That way you can actually co uh, correct for uh, tungsten lights or uh, use it or some, some cooler fluorescent lights or something like that. Those are probably the most important gels for that type of photography. If you're just um, getting in and you want some funky creative gels, what I would tell you to do is one, I love blue. So like this just sings to my style and what I love, like shooting something like this is just what I love. So I would tell you to get a color that you love and then get its contrasting color, right? So the contrasting color to blue is gonna be orange. So get a blue and an orange. Uh, or if you like green and red or such and such. You can look at the color wheel, look at one side and then look at the, the very opposite side right from the color that you love. Get that color as a contrast. It, it's really, really good stuff. Or you could also look up that same color and find a complementary color uh, and just start there. If you you know, I honestly think one gel is fun to play with, just especially as you start to learn that more power means less color, less power means more color, but obviously less light, stuff like that. Perfect. Cliff's cool. in the house. Oh, Cliff's here, what's up, Cliffy? Cool. So, what I'm gonna do now, so let's do this. I'm gonna position the light a little bit more over here to where it's hitting you in the face a little bit more. Do you see all the light right there? Right here, right here. Perfect, stay right there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this leaf to bring in, so when you look over the shoulder, does it, um, is that blocking your face? Yeah. All right. No, okay, three, two, oh, I'm not even, I don't even have you in the frame. Here we go, three, two, one. Cool, that's beautiful. It's actually really beautiful. What I wanna do is I wanna bring the power up just a little bit more on that, stay right where you are. So let's bring the power up to a power level of, let's bring it up by, let's start with a half a stop. But we were at eight and a half. Yeah, well, the continuous light turned off. There we go. I wanna make sure. I thought I put a full battery on there. I did. I was gonna say, I could have put a full battery. So here we go. Three, two. Let's make sure I get the shadow on the background from this one. Three, two, one. So there we go, it's starting to sparkle a little bit more. Honestly, I wanna bring in just a little bit more light, so let's take it to nine and a half. And just so you know, the A2 from Kate right now is probably a good 15 feet away, wouldn't you say? Easily, yes. So, so oh, for some reason my continuous light's kicking off. Let's see, maybe I need to do a firmware update. So here we go. Is that blocking your eye, or can you see it just fine? I can see it. Three, two, one. Beautiful, oh, it's really, really beautiful. 
So now I've got a nice little pop from the A2. You guys can see that shot there. I have the really cool broadcast of the Mansora onto Kate, which is really, really cool. And it's a really, really easy technique for uh, and some visual interest. So you can use the gobo to light a pattern onto your subject, or you can use that gobo just to light that pattern onto the background and maybe just leave Kate all kind of like mysterious and blue looking. So let's do that really fast. Someone's also asking, um, what would it look like if you added a grid here? If I added a grid? Yeah. Uh, what did you want me to add a grid to? Do you want me to add a grid to like the three foot octa? Because the A2- I'm wondering if you use a grid, how it would look. So the A2 does have a grid on it. The A2 has a 20 degree grid on it. Uh, and that's just, again, to keep some of that light uh, on to Kate and that way, so like right here when you look at the, the edges, uh, I, I'm keeping a lot more blue in that background. So that's, that's kind of the goal of, of what that 20 degree grid is doing. I could tighten it up a little bit more and, and control some more of that light, but it does have a 20 degree grid on it. So let's do this now. Let's bring you like here, I think. And then I'm gonna bring with Monty. the Montessori here. And I'm going to shoot this past Kate. So we're going to try to broadcast this onto the background and just like Kate with the blue. So I just have to make sure I keep right. this off of her. And so for here, I might actually use a tighter grid. So let's get a, let's get a 10 degree. So just a little bit tighter on the, the grid pattern. Just to keep the light right where we want it. Uh, let's see if we can turn. See if they can see it broadcasting there. Not really. Not really. So let me just make sure that I can see it broadcasting in my screen. So take a step back. Position? Yeah, I think so. So three, two, one. Oh, I shot too soon, but that was actually a really, really cool shot. So we were able to kind of get this really cool silhouette that's not like it's not blacked out. There's still a lot of cool blue tones in there. We get to even bump the, the main light or the, the fill light up on Kate a little bit. So jump back in there real fast, Kate. I'm gonna actually pump the power up of the A2 to full, and then I'm gonna take this up by a stop there. Who goes to three, two. Oh wow, I'm <laughs> I'm firing like crazy. You know what? It's just to keep you it's just to keep you on your keep toes. On your toes. Yeah. So that's cool. So now we have this really, really cool pattern on the background. And again, I don't have the, because of the way that I'm angled, I don't necessarily have the space to back this light up some more. Uh, at least I don't, at least I don't think I do. Let's see. Half a foot. Oh, okay. I could put it, I could put it on a boom maybe and get it with a little. Well, that gives you about four feet. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something ultra sketchy. I'm just gonna tilt the light against the wall just because. You know, living on the edge. Nice. Cool, I just wanna make sure I'm getting the shadows on. Oh, that's, that's way more pronounced. Alright, cool. So let's see how that looks. Here we go. Three, two, one. There we go. So we have some sharper shadows on the background. Uh, and it looks really, really cool, I think. Yeah, that is pretty. Really fun stuff. Cool. So when you back it up, it makes it a more yeah, so when you, so when you when you back the light up, you're making the light source smaller in relationship to the thing that you're bouncing against and you're making a harder light. So you're filling it up. So let's look at some photos, see if y'all have any questions and then we'll sign out of this bad boy. The light is harsh on her face. Can you make it softer? So the light the, so are you talking about the the current light? So the current light, the light is not harsh on her face. It's actually quite the opposite. Uh, because we're shooting with a big gigantic softbox. Um, sorry, I've got some light stands over the top of our power cables here. There we go. So the the main light in the so let's go here. Let's compare these two side by side. So the hard light is what you need for broadcasting the the pattern of whatever it is that you're shooting the light through onto your subject. So if I need that pattern to be on Kate, I have to shoot her with a hard light. 
It's just what you have to do. Um, you can mitigate some of the hard lightness. A, a lot of the times what people um, misconstrue harshness with hard light is shadows. If you don't like it as shadowy as I, I like it with this, uh, then you can also take your fill light and you can bring that fill light up and drop the contrast. And that's gonna make it feel a little bit less harsh because there's not so much of a difference between your main and your fill light. So, but in order to get that pattern onto Kate, I have to shoot the hard light at Kate. So the hard light has to be the thing that is illuminating Kate. So for the second light, or for the second shot that we have, I wanted the, the shape to be broadcast on the background and I did not want that on Kate. So I had the option of keeping the soft light on her, uh, which is what we did, and just letting the hard light hit the background and broadcast the shadow. But again, in order to get the shape, you have to have hard light because hard light creates definition. Soft light fills in things and, and takes away definition. So uh, it's why you know, generally, if you're if you're shooting someone who may not have the best skin in the world, soft light might be a little bit better just because it's going to start filling in some more, maybe some of those deeper pores or some of the unevenness of the skin. Whereas a harder light is going to make that crazy pronounced. So, and then you can use that same that same idea in photographing. Maybe if you or shooting like an old weathered sailor, right? And you want to exa uh, exaggerate the the time and the the wrinkles and the and the just the harshness, you would use a hard light because that's going to increase the definition. So, really really cool stuff. Um, again, this the idea behind this shoot was pretty simple. I wanted it to feel like uh, oh man, I'm all caught up in my I'm all caught up in my cables. Yeah, 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 I unplugged. Everything. Hold on, hold on. I do have a question here. Is it possible to photograph with gels in TTL? Does yes. That make sense? Yes, it's, it, it is possible to photograph with gels in TTL, but what's going to happen is, so someone was asking, uh, is it possible to photograph with gels in TTL? Yes, it's possible to photograph with gels in TTL, but the problem is, is that TTL is going to try to take, make the scene 18% gray, so it's going to try to give you a proper exposure. What that's going to do is probably make the gels not so colorful. So as you pump up the power of a gel, the saturation drops, okay? So if you want a more saturated, deeper blue like we have here, or a deeper red or whatever, you want that power to be low. So. And that's what we did here. Also, one of the cool things about working with gels and uh, and like gobos and stuff like that and things that can broadcast shadows is the blue, the things that are blocking the main light are going to be color shifted into the color of the gel, which is really, really cool. So that's why you have these really cool blue fronds from this plant for your, uh, inside of all the shadows, which is really, really neat. So fun stuff. Any other questions? Um, let's see. About a mist filter on the lens. You could totally use a mist filter. I mean, softer on her face. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's just gonna, yeah, it's gonna add some more of the the, the glowiness. Um, but it's, I personally like the hard light look. It's it's something that I, it's a look that I really love, and I prefer shooting that. Um, so for me, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, for you, if you don't love the harshness, then yeah, you can use something like a pro mist to try to maybe bring some of that uh kind of bring some softness back into that that way but it's never going to change the fact <coughs> sorry it's never going to change the fact that they the shadows are going to be more pronounced because all you're doing is softening between the camera and the and the subject the image but the light on the subject is just the light on the subject you could you know what you could you could hit diffuse the light so if you wanted to, you could use, um, where's my A10? Let's see. If you wanted to try to diffuse it out a little bit, with the A2, you don't need to so much because the actual cover of the um, flash tube is, uh, sorry, I'm making a lot of noise with the other gobos that we brought out just in case. Well, I guess I could show people other things you could use for gobos. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but if you wanted to, it's not really necessary but, and you'd have to buy it separately, but we make this dome that comes with the A10s and A1s and stuff like that. You could, in theory, snap it onto the front of it, but one, you're gonna lose the effect of the grids, which stinks, uh, unless you don't mind throwing the light everywhere. And this will diffuse it out a little bit, but the front of the A2 is pretty soft. Now, this on the front of the uh, A10 would definitely smooth it out a little bit more. So cool. And then, 
just also so you know, like you can use all kinds of stuff for gobos. And it just reminded me as I was uh, clacking stuff around over there. So these are just like little metal sheets, like printed aluminum sheets from the hardware store. And you can broadcast all these types of shapes. Yeah, so let me see if I can get in a little bit closer. Yeah, no, we're good. Cool. cool. But you can broadcast all kinds of shapes on your subject. All you're doing is trying to put this in between your subject and your light. So, and then <clears throat> with something like these with much smaller patterns, you're going to want to make sure you back that light up some more or use like a snoot or something to, to make the, the light source a lot tinier uh, that way. Uh, I don't know that black's really going to change anything. Black's just going to keep things from reflecting around. What are you thinking about? I was trying to find the, um, we also had, um... Are you talking about the things that we did for, like, the live last week with mm -hmm. the, our big... No, no, I was looking for the, um, the blinds. Oh, oh, yeah, and then you can use stuff like this. So, I bought these for photography stuff. Like, these literally just stay inside the studio all the time. Uh, I bought them at a, a yard sale for, like, I think we paid, like, five bucks for yeah. them. So you don't have to, I mean, if you want to, if you, you know, don't have a yard sale that you can get these from, you can go to the hardware store. Wow, they're going to open all the way. But, <laughs> but you can shoot your light through this. And the cool thing is you can kind of change how the, the louvers are as far as like the, the width that's viewed by the light. And you can broadcast light that way too, which is really, really cool. You could take a piece of foam core and you can cut a window frame out of it and, and broadcast a hard light through that and, and make it look like the light's coming through a window. So you can do a lot of really, really fun stuff with gobos. Again, you can use house plants. You can buy pre-printed metal, whatever it is that you want. They're just a really fun way to add some visual interest, maybe help tell the story a little bit more. Uh, and I really, really had a lot of fun with them. So uh, any other questions from anybody before we sign off? I think we're good. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and kicking it with us today. A super, super good time talking about gobos, -go making some cool images. I'm really, really happy with both of the, the images that we made. And it was oh, we have last minute questions. Last minute questions. Could you try to project modifier focusing on the background? It would be part of the gobo hitting the subject will be diffused and how the softer shadow turns. Hold on, what was that? Uh, you might want to read it. Here, let me read this really fast for mine. Uh, you could try projector modifier, focusing it on the background. That way, the part of the gobo hitting the subject will be defocused and have a softer shadow transition. I mean, you could, I've never, I mean, Kurt, maybe you could send me, uh, like, just like, add another comment in the thing with like a link to something that you're talking about. I'd love to see it. I've never seen a modifier like that, but I'm always open to see new cooler things. But if there's something out there that works that way, that can keep the light diffused on the subject, but hard light on it, you could, you could, in theory, take a very, very large softbox, like the four foot octa or the five foot octa, and you could pull half the diffusion panel off. And you could pull half the diffusion panel off and light your subject with the half of the diffusion panel that's still there, and then let the hard light that comes out of the side of the, the uncovered diffusion panel broadcast the pattern but again it's only if you're trying to broadcast that pattern onto the background and not onto your subject once the pattern has to be on your subject it's got to be a hard light and if you want that to be less harsh then you need to bring in a fill light and bring that up so at what power from one to ten is the key light <clears throat> okay so depending on the placement of where i was so originally when the light so if someone was wanting to know the main a2 where its power level was so when it was up close <clears throat> and right inside the plant i believe we were at power level of like eight <clears throat> sorry on the very last shot that we took where we were back way up we we're at power level of 10. so and that was just to get more light through it obviously we backed it up a whole bunch it's easily 20 feet from the background so you need a little more coverage and then you have a grid so it's, it's yeah and at what power is the <coughs> light compared to the key light um so it's kind of tough to say just because they are very different powered lights so that's a these are both 500 watt lights that's a 100 watt light at almost full power these are uh 500 watt lights and i believe we're at we're at six and a half and seven. So honestly, <clears throat> because they're all running through, um, they're running through a gel, which takes away power, and they're running through a soft modifier, which takes away power, 
they're honestly probably all very, very close to the same power technically. Like if you, let's see, 500 watts at nine is 250, at, at eight is 125. So, I mean, honestly, they're pretty close in power to one another right now as to how much watt seconds they're putting out. Um, just the A2 doesn't have to go through anything. It's going through a grid and straight up, whereas the um, the B10s are having to go through gels, which the blue gels take away a lot of light. They are they do consume quite a bit. And then they have to go through diffusion. So, uh, but yes, so cool. Really, really fun doing all this kind of stuff. I'm so glad you guys brought some seriously good questions to the live today. Uh, we had a, real, a lot of fun making a couple of different images. If you have any other questions, you can jump into one of our one of our one on one breakout sessions. Uh, Anders might be there today, or Gibba. I'm not really sure who's there today, but I'm also around uh, later on, so you can come and chat with me if you'd like to. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching. Geared up. Peace out, everybody.